Hey, welcome everybody. Guess what? I have a super special guest with me today, all the way from Australia. Uh, please welcome our good friend, John Prescott. John, great to have you join us. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Tom. I really appreciate it. So it's always always a blessing and uh, uh, definitely a privilege. Uh, this is great. Last time you were on, uh, your friend Dan was with us. We got into that conversation. Yeah. We didn't get all the way into some of the reasons for what had taken place uh, with that group that was killed. Uh, we know they yeah. were labeled as these radical. They believe Jesus is coming back. There's going to be a seven-year tribulation period. Uh, the, I know that, those those bad people we see they're crazy and, they're like, lunatics <laughs> well there's well, some of us are lunatics but that's beside the point but we do see that narrative picking up too at the Absolutely. same time we're watching it it's coming up here in the U.S. I'm sure you saw a while back a couple months back um, the Tennessee a month or so back the school shooting in Nashville yep. with the Christian school and uh, I mean you look at this and you go it's time to get rid of the Christians. So, I, I mean, we have a lot of other things I'm going to ask you about because you're going to yeah. update us on Australia. But I'm just yep. reflecting back when, when Dan was with you and the things we were talking about then. And I'm One other thing I'll about. throw out there, too. I just saw this very interesting statistic just in regards to the, the shootings and whatnot in the U.S. I heard that just in the last year alone, there's been 162 shootings. Is that right? I heard something like that. Okay, so this is from what I understand how it is. A mass shooting is if I don't it's it's some bizarre way they calculate it. It's not just it, oh, it's there's not, a math equation to this. If there's a math equation that's bizarre, it's not like 10 people were killed okay. in a shooting. It's like maybe two people were killed. Maybe. So it's okay. weird. No, it's really weird. So you have these a few school shootings by transgenders, which you know the media absolutely refuses to report on that. But you look at the way they've calculated the mass shootings. You go, wait a minute, that's that wouldn't be calculated a mass shooting two years ago. You yeah. wouldn't even think of it. I mean, if yeah. you did it that way, there's what? How many mass shootings in Chicago every single weekend? You know, but well, it's a weird way they're doing the math, but. It's a way of manipulating things to, yeah. to uh, eliminate by, second by, by that by yeah by that math equation. Uh, no wonder uh, you know globally things are looking bad when it's eighty degrees out. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean that's yeah. a, that used to be a nice day. Now it's it's global warming. Now it's, now it's global warming, or if it's sixty degrees, it's climate change, and we're all going to mm. die because and you can't. You better not light a fire. You, you, I mean, it's just, it's insanity. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> so I got a question for you. So over, for I mean, we have, we have a lot to talk about here, but do you guys have concealed carry or anything like that over where you live? I wish. <laughs> so does any, I mean, are you allowed to have weapons? Well, yes and no. There's a lot of laws uh, to that. Um, like, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. And I actually do have a friend of mine who used to be a uh, a gun instructor. Most times for you to actually own a gun, you need one of two things. You need to own a very large piece of property, and then you can own a rifle or a oh. shotgun, but you cannot have a handgun, uh, I believe. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And also, if for you to own a handgun... Um, there's a whole bunch of training that you need to go through, which I actually do agree with that. I think that you shouldn't be able to go to, you know, Kmart or Walmart or whatever. And, and, you know, just here you go. Um, but uh, you've got to be part of a gun club is part of it. And I think in, it depends on what state you're in. I'm pretty sure the actual gun itself has to be stored on the premises on the gun club premises. You can't take oh, it home. You can't take it home. So Kind of like sitting ducks, everybody is. Pretty much. In fact, it's funny you mentioned the, the point of sitting ducks, because I remember it was about 10 years ago, I ended up having to get uh, fingerprints at the local police station um, just for some ID stuff that was, was going on. And um, I asked the cop just in regards to gun laws and things like that. And he, even the cop said that when he's done with the shift, he has to leave the handgun at the station. He cannot take it home with him. And even he was commenting that wow. can be pretty dicey because he actually had, you know, here he is, 
he he's arresting people. I'm sure yeah. they know where he, he's at. He's going home with with nothing. Somebody could come with a, a bat or a cleaver or whatever and and take him out. That's bad. That's mm. really, I mean, to think a cop can't take a gun home. Yeah. That is, man, that is, that's bad. Now, granted, that's Victoria. That's Melbourne. Okay. I don't know what it is in, in Queensland. Sure. It's kind of like you have the things like we have here in the States. California's yeah. got its sets of rules. Yep. And and states with like Texas have re, have good rules. California's yeah. got their communist rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> well, you've definitely outlined it there. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, commie, <laughs> California is where I live. Oh. I'm trying to bring light into a very dark place. Hey, uh, we're going to be uh, in Australia. We, we're not quite ready to go full on event mode yet, but um, thanks to John, we'll be doing a conference. Billy Crone. Thanks to you. Uh, uh, thanks to thanks to Jesus. So there you go. There you go. Uh, Billy Crone, Brandon Holthouse, Pete Garcia, and myself um, will be going all the way to Australia. And then Super probably, exciting. Probably even New Zealand too. So we're working on these details, folks. We'll let you know that. That'll be early 2024, so got some time. Okay, so John, are you ready? Yes, go for it. Okay, let's talk about this coal plant. Um, so <laughs> you're laughing. So you want to, okay, so this is, I'll just read a little bit of the note you sent me, and then you take it from there, or you can just, okay. you can just take it away. So they go just shut it. down a coal plant in NSW. Uh, New South and, Wales. New South Wales, and this ties into the uh, an email that you have sent from a politician said they're going to yeah. artificially collapse the electric grid so they can implement their beast system when it gets fired back. Okay, back up. All right, now I don't know. Uh, you probably didn't catch this. Do you know? Uh, he's a he's um, Trends Journal. He's the founder of Trends Journal, Gerald Salente, real well know the known. Name, yeah. Okay, you know. Okay. I, I was watching him. So you sent me your email, right? Yeah. I'm watching Gerald Salente on, it's like a Peter Schiff show or somebody like that. A uh, yeah. big finance thing. And Gerald Salente, out of the blue, he goes, you know, with his, he's got, he's full on Italian. I just want you to imagine. And then he starts cursing a little bit. And then he says, <laughs> in Australia, they shut down everything for the weekend. And then all of a sudden it begins in Australia and it affects the whole world. On Monday morning, everything has changed. Now, I, I got to be kidding. Carol Salente is brilliant. He has connections with everybody. I read your email and I'm listening to him probably a day or two later thinking, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> this is, Gerald Salente isn't just making things up. So anyways, it's, it's, I'm looking going, okay, this is, so walk us through some of this. This is just the first talking point we got because there are some things, folks, oh. that uh, that we need to be aware of. Tom, I got chills. I had no idea he said that. And yeah. of course, you know, I was sent this this email probably about a month ago in regards to, I mean, this, this is coming straight. I won't name who the politician was, but this was coming straight from a politician. The guy's unsaved. You know, he, he has nothing to do with, with God. And yet he's talking about just the whole power grid uh, getting shut down for days at a time where I guess the reason why they're doing this is they've got some sort of uh, computerized system that needs to be installed uh, in the interim while the whole power grid is down. Now, of course, you know, the side effect of that too is it creates some sort of chaos uh, within the, uh, the country. Um, and again, from chaos, you can get control very easily. You can tell whatever lies you need to and get control very easily over the public. And I, I think that's what this is this is all about. So it's kind of twofold. Okay, let's scare the bejesus out of, out of people for one. And, and then let's do what we need to do to get this, this system in place as it, as it needs to be in place. Um, so, of course, I'm bringing this up again because literally, Tom, this was just Two, I guess it would have been two days ago now, how Channel 7 News here was announcing how here it is, they are um, going, they're, they're already in the middle. It's going to take two weeks to fully get it uh, shut down, but there is a coal-fired uh, coal power plant in New South Wales that they are completely shutting down. This is the trend in Australia, which by the way, I don't know if you knew this, but Australia does not do nuclear. 
Um, so it's all coal and hydroelectric. Um, now, <clears throat> the funny thing about all of this too, and this, this is so bizarre to me, technology, you know, coal plants built, what, 40, 50 years ago, I would consider those as, as dirty, dirty coal fired power plants, but the technology has gotten to the point now where they've been able to clean it up quite a bit. And not only that too, Australia, from what I understand it, look, I'm no geologist, but it, you know, it's my understanding that in Australia, in Australia, they have the cleanest burning coal around. So why this is now an issue uh, for whatever global warming or whatever, I mean, it's just going along with, with the narrative, uh, the way I see it. And in the end, here it is, we're shutting down all these power plants in Australia. And yet uh, China, what, what are they building? Like, I don't know, two a day or something like that. I mean, I'm being facetious, but yeah. um, they're building a it's... tremendous amount of these power plants in China. And Australia is selling all their coal to China. I, well, Imagine is it that. really about global warming? No, it's not. Gonna... Or... Okay. Or why would these politicians, at least in America, sure. buy property on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean um, yeah. if the sea is rising? I mean, pretty much a foot above sea level. So they don't believe any of the things that they are telling no. everybody else that they believe in. Uh, no. And, you know, we, we look, here's the nonsense that's going on here in California right now, which is usually a lot of nonsense. It's all mm -hmm. nonsense here. So. The governor, yeah, <laughs> what a treat. So <laughs> the governor and the and the politicians that are yeah. totally leaning left um, are trying to pass some kind of law or something that based upon your income, uh, you only have to pay X amount of dollars for electricity. Now I'm going to give you an example, right? Okay. The electricity in our house, uh, we have solar, We've had it for 10 years. We purchased it. We didn't lease it. Um, and so you get that, right? That's mm -hmm. what we did. And we purchased it, right? We bought it through a private company. We didn't go through any of the governor's plans or any of that stuff. So we purchased it. But even with electricity, I with solar, our electric bill, let's just say during the hot months, is still 400 bucks a month. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So That's a lot it, of money. Oh, well... Yeah, you should see other people, you know? Yeah. And that's with solar. I mean, I, I know some bills out here that are outrageous. And that's, yeah. you know, how hot it gets where I live, John. I mean, 110, 115. Uh, well, I lived in Fahrenheit. Florida for 20 years. That 400 bucks a month was kind of the norm there. Yeah, so you, you kind of get that, right? Okay, so you have that. Okay, and then you, so now what the governor is saying here is, okay, if you're, you're low income, under... $28,000 a year, then the you only have to pay $30 a month for electricity. I think it's 30. Yep. And all the electricity you can use all the time. Okay. If your <laughs> income is like $70,000 a month, then you pay $60 a month for electricity. Now in my mind, I'm thinking, Hey, this is starting to go in my favor, <laughs> right? I'm thinking, and you can use all the electricity you want all the time. Okay. Now, this is just, I mean, because really I can see the trend. I'm going, I'm going to be in pretty good shape. I'm pretty happy. My electric bill is going to plummet and I can run air conditioner 24 seven. And the other thing is California has pushed everybody to get solar for so long. What does that do to all of their solar programs? They've crammed down everybody's throat because, Hey, it's free. It, it's almost free is what it is. Well, that, and the, yeah. And the other insane part is, California's electric grid is so bad, John. It's so bad. They can't, they can't keep up with the, the, the problems we have now. Our house gets shut down every summer, right? Uh, <sighs> you can't charge your electric cars half the time that they're forcing you to buy. And now it's free electricity for yeah. almost free for every, I mean, I, it's just insane. And I'm thinking overall, we're good. Who's going to pay for it? It's not going to work. You don't have the electric grid. So what is really going on? These people are insane, but at the same time, they have to be intentionally destroying something, which would go back to shutting down your coal factories. This is not just a, a maybe they want more votes. 
Well, that's that's exactly where I was going with this. I'm thinking this is just a a uh, you know thinly veiled uh, uh, promise just to get your vote to begin with. And as you're telling me this, the first thing that came to my mind is I'm like, ah, making under twenty seven thousand dollars, I'd be setting up a Bitcoin farm if I was doing that. <laughs> there there really, you go. You can. That's really what you know because that that's the whole issue when it comes to Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin farming is is the power. Uh, your cost of power has to be less than the actual Bitcoin you mine itself. So if, if twenty seven or twenty dollars a month or whatever it is, um, yeah, we're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Let's All, do you it. You can run twenty four seven. You can run your electricity. And so I mean, the whole thing is is so. I I, I mean, they're manipulating. I, they're they're lying to us. It's impossible. Uh, yeah, okay, you don't, no, you I, don't have the the power grid to to do it to begin with. No, it's, we, it's, we can't yeah. even charge a Prius in California, let alone try uh, to run, try to give everybody free electricity. Yeah. So, okay, so looking at this with this coal plant and everything, and and, and what you wrote to me a while back, and what Gerald Salente said, what I gather, John, is this is an intended attempt to bring a. Uh, a uh, fake cyber attack right. that's happened. Right. And that's that's where I think this is all going, is that um, they've got to put enough stress on the grid to say, uh, so that when they do shut the, you know, flip flip the switch, it's kind of like, oh, we messed up. You know, we, 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 we shouldn't have done all of this. Sorry. And uh, next thing you know, they're fine. We've got it under control. In the meantime, they put in the system that they need to uh, when the, when the grid comes back up. That's what okay. I see this this as. Okay. So w with here, uh, yeah, you have so they can implement their beef system when it gets fired mm. back up. Now, yep. so I'm looking at it. I just find all of it really interesting, which would also explain why California is giving free almost free electricity to everybody. You know, thirty dollars a month—that's just insane. Um, so there, there's something going on here. Well, if anything is in your case too, I mean, uh, aren't they trying to put Gavin Newsom in the hot seat for uh, 2024 election? I think so. I yeah. think that's I, I. So that would definitely get all the people who already hate him in California to say, well, maybe. I mean, some people are pretty stupid. Even if they hate him now, they'll still say. Oh gosh, uh, oh, we got great electricity, and he really did yeah. wonderful things. I mean, people forget the bad stuff that happened yesterday. If all of a sudden they get something good today, I see that in Melbourne. Here it is: Dan Andrews locked everybody down, who's the the premier in Victoria and Melbourne. And you know, you go down there to oh, Dan did a good job. He knew, you know, wow. we didn't know. They they all forgot. I can't believe it. It's amazing they're, they're how at, forgetful people are. Cognitive dissonance. That's just <laughs> truly amazing. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you about this. Uh, you know, I've got a little bit of info on Unicoin, uh, but you're talking about bricks. Um, right. Let's go. Let's. Uh, most people are not familiar yet with Unicoin. They're going to be hearing I'm a lot. Terribly familiar with it, other yeah. than you know what I've what I've found. Yeah, it's still fairly new. It's new. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I have another program coming up on just Unicoin, uh, right. but but you're talking you got Unicoin bricks. Uh, we have the whole situation going on with the petrodollar. We're yep. watching the collapse of America, which you know we're in America, you're in Australia. But the problem is it will affect the whole world. What's what's happening, yeah. and that's what people need to wake up to and realize this is a huge. Um, uh, huge, has huge ramifications for the direction everything is going. Pretty much. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I look, I, I mean, I said this earlier where, you know, I think most uh, world wars, most wars in general, basically, uh, you know, they started from uh, economic turmoil. Um, and that's kind of where we're headed right now. I mean, <clears throat> if you, if you, you know, this BRICS thing to me, is uh, very concerning because this is basically, you know, 20, I think it's 26% of the world now is, is kind of going along with this. And it's going to put, like, here it is, we've had this whole petrodollar system in place since, since the 70s, which has artificially propped up the US dollar. 
it's worked wonderfully for a long time. But, you know, I, I think that last year when, um, you know, Russia was basically taken off of the SWIFT system, which is the inter, inter, uh, the monetary system going from country to country, that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on Russia to basically step up their game. And so instead of, you know, the sanctions uh, putting enough pressure on Russia at the time to, you know, put a hurt on them, which was the original intent, um, it actually got them and the rest of the world to motivate to say, hey, we're not going to put up with this anymore. We're going to figure out other ways to get our natural gas and our fuel and, and, and things like that. So we don't have to rely on the petrodollar anymore. So here it is. We're watching uh, all these BRICS nations, uh, which is, was it Brazil, Russia, uh, India, India, China, China South Africa, yes? South Africa. Right. I think in August, they're going to do um, a vote here. And this is something I think we all need to be paying attention to very carefully, because as more countries uh, join this, and I think that is the trend of where it's going, look, it's going to put enough pressure on the United States that um, they'll have no choice but to go to war to basically get out of the mess they've made for themselves. Now, a lot of the things that I have, uh, you know, been following too is they're they're very clear. They do not have the the manpower to uh, the U.S. does not have the manpower to uh, take on any front. Let's say in China, um, China is a very big concern because they've had their eyes set on Taiwan for a very long time. I mean, we've been, we've been hearing about this in Australia now for at least the last two years. Oh, there's going to be an invasion. I know the Taiwanese too, because uh, Taiwan is where I think uh, we we all pretty much get the majority of our microchips uh, from them. They've made it very clear: if China comes, we're burning everything to the ground. So I think for China, it's more along the lines of a, Taiwan is more of a black eye to China than anything, and they really see Taiwan as just kind of like this rogue state, and eventually we're going to get them back. Now, why this is important? is because just last month here in Australia, you got the new prime minister, uh, Albanese. He, this was huge news where I guess he went to California there and Australia has now purchased, I think it was eight, 12, 13 submarines, US submarines to come here. Now, I don't know if it was any news there in, in the US, but it was very big news here. It wasn't big news, but I, it, it came across me. I mean, I, I thought- okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you didn't see the mainstream media. Right. And and I wouldn't expect to. It was big news here just because, I mean, that's that's a big deal. Um, in fact, they, they I know they were talking about, there was some blunder here in Australia where, uh, oh, we're going to build sub submarines. And when the rubber hit the road, they realized it's going to take 50 years to, <laughs> to yeah. actually build them. So that, that ain't going to fly. This isn't going to work. No. My concern with all of this, and I this is what I'm watching, is that... Um, with the purchase of these submarines, it basically gives the United States a front, like a, a, a an armed front, so that if China actually does go to Taiwan, they can say that Australia is going to go and go take care of this. And I will say this much, too. In the last, let's say, six months, I have heard a tremendous amount of military jets flying over my house here uh, in southern Queensland, where um, they're just running maneuvers. But again, it's like, why? What's going on that I don't know about? I, you know, th I know that also too for submarines, they um, it takes a tremendous amount of training to to do this sort of thing. So my question is, do you really think that should there be a uh, some sort of war effort going after Taiwan? Do you really think those submarines are going to be filled with Australian people? I don't think yeah. so. So it's a, it's in a sense, it's a proxy war of the United yeah. States, but not using Australian soldiers. You know, usually a proxy war, right. like Iran will use Hezbollah, they'll use Hamas, they'll use those people. Right. But in this case, the U.S. will just put it, we'll, we'll put them in a big tube, but it's going to be American soldiers in there is what the, the, right. is likely going to happen. Which also, right. you know, we, okay, we look at Ukraine. <laughs> that's where and, i was going with this okay yeah i mean i you know there's been a lot of questions about ukraine 
from the beginning that certain people have brought up. I don't know yeah. if you know who Monkey Works is. Oh, he, yeah. Uh, okay, so Monkey, he broke that story of the Nord Stream 2 like uh -huh. the next day. I saw that one. That was amazing. Watch it. Yeah, he broke oh. it the next day. It didn't hit media till what, February, when Seymour Hersh did his article. Now it's uh -huh. everywhere, you know, uh, and, the, you know, the facts are there. Yep. And then, you know, there's been people that reported when the tanks, uh, regarding the tanks that were going to be given to Ukraine, and they're saying, what look. What a joke that was. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing. And well, okay, let's let's use the tanks. I'm sorry okay. to interrupt you here, but let's just use those tanks as just an example of what I just said with the submarines. Here it is, that channel redacted has already talked about there's U.S. troops, boots on the ground in Ukraine fighting Russians. So again, who's filling those tanks? Do you think it's Ukraine? They've already talked about how the kind of training it takes for those tanks, yeah, you for the Ukrainians. Yeah. It's not possible. Yeah. It's not feasible. So it's, it's not, yeah, of course it's going to be U S troops boots on the ground. Yeah. So we start looking at this, the U S I mean, you're, you know, you're a long ways away from here. You look at it. You can, you we're. I think here in America, Americans are blind to some, I mean, there's actually people here that think Joe Biden is brilliant. I mean, go really? figure that one out. There's something like 22% of the people here that still think Joe Biden's doing a good job. What I want to know is who are those who's, who's that 22%? You know, oh I mean, gosh. and Kamala Harris obviously would fall into part of the 22%. But I mean, there's actually people here that think that. And then you have the media spin, and then there's still a whole lot of people over here, John, that think, well, it's not that bad. Well, the United States is now woke. We have generals that have complained about it and sound tried to sound the alarm, but they get shut down yeah. by the bosses. Um, uh, they've said, hey, we're in a lot of trouble. Um, there are some reports that some of our equipment is in disrepair uh, for, for, all, for all the different armed forces, mm. whether it be planes or, or uh, boats or submarines, all of that. Yeah. Um, and then you have just the wokeness that is affected. So we bring COVID yeah. in. And um, I can't say too much about this because I think this is going to post on like YouTube tomorrow. But okay. still, <laughs> uh, I don't, well, I know for right now, let's just, I'll tell you what, we'll have to edit this part out if we have to. But for right now, let's just go with it. You bring in COVID and then the vaccine, you have good troops that said, we don't want anything to do with this. Right. They bail. Um, right. You, it's like the pilots that have said, hey, we're, we're not going to do this. I know some pilots that, that left, just like the medical profession that left, said we aren't going to want any part of it. I do know of a couple of pilots that were young, and they said, what am I going to do for a job? And they felt like right. they needed to. Uh, one in particular said, hey, my body's messed up ever since I got that. Yep. And then you throw in the woke factor that's happening to the troops because they're young, 18, 19, 20 years old. Brought in there, brainwashed for, brainwashed for two years. And, um, you know, remember back when we were young and the TV show was on with MASH and you had Klinger was on there, who yes. dressed like a woman? <laughs> and the intent yes. was to get out. He wanted to get out to of the get, military, he, Yes, right? he wanted a, a Section 8. He wanted a Section <laughs> 8. So that was humorous back then. Now this is the reality of it. And so we've people's minds are so warped. By everything, it's, how does the U.S. fight a battle in Ukraine? And from what I hear, they want to bring more troops in there. Yeah, they, they if, Taiwan is a, is a problem. China goes in there; it's a problem. Yep. Uh, so I, I I'm going. Where is America? Is just really in a bad way, which which spells disaster for the Western world. It's very concerning with the U.S. dollar of what's going on, and even myself. There, there's a couple, boy, you threw out a whole lot to unpack there too. Cause I, I'm, <laughs> you're talking about the LGBTQ and the, and uh, the military and the finances of all of this, you know, what, where do you go to unpack all of that? Um, look, even myself in Australia, and this is the funny thing about this is like, okay, this is affecting the petrodollar at the same time. I'm watching the Australian dollar kind of, I mean, look, I basically, if I were to come back to the U.S., I'm only getting 60 cents on the dollar. 
to come yeah. back. The, yeah. the the exchange rate is horrible. You come here, oh, trust me, you'll be eating uh, lobster every night. Yes, so, I'm going. I I'm going to Australia. I can't wait. There you go. <laughs> Very attractive. So. I don't understand exactly, and again, look, I'm no monetary expert uh, to really speak with authority on this. I don't exactly understand why Australia is following, uh, you know, this this trail with the U.S. dollar declining uh, the way it is. But it's, you know, it brings up the question of, okay, well, how do you prepare for this? How do you know? I'm trying to do things like, uh, you know, buying gold and silver, and and just trying to at least, you know kind of put money and things in places, pay off my debts. In fact, I've done videos on this uh, about, you know, trying to be biblically uh, uh, obedient to how was the Bible say in regards to how do we handle money? So again, you know, things I brought up are things uh, like being a slave to uh, uh, the lender and uh, you don't want to yeah. do that. So pay off your credit card debt if you can as quickly as possible, because we don't know where all this is going to go start, you know, saving, be it food or money or, or water, whatever you need to just kind of have it off in a corner so that when uh, everything hits, you've, you're, you're not like freaking out. And a lot of people are going to be freaking out. So, you know, you, we've, I think all of us, uh, we need to be uh, preparing along those lines in regards to the whole military uh, thing too. It's like, I, I'm sorry, but you know, I, well, again, maybe I'm parroting the, the generals who have issue with this, but, you know, when somebody has a gun pointed at you, they don't care what your pronoun is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that that's what it comes down to. It's it, And so therefore this, this military in, in the, the uh, idea of being, you know, social justice uh, for everything, they, well, they've weakened the U S military as a result of it. So I, where this goes, I don't know. But back to what the point I made earlier, when there's economic pressure, it's probably going to end up in war or conflict of some sort. It's a matter uh, it, now of yeah, how big. It, yeah, it does. It, it, it's just a matter of time. It's not if, it is yeah. when. I uh, did a video a couple of years ago, probably about, probably about two years ago, and I showed in the video a uh, recruitment ad for troops for Russia, a recruitment <laughs> ad for troops for China. I saw that. You saw that? And the recruitment ad that. for troops in America. And it was disturbing. And we've gotten far worse since that time. Really? Uh, uh. Just continuing to continuing to plummet down. But all this at the same time where you you talked about Unicoin, which you know yeah. is just starting, people are just starting to hear about now. So we have Unicoin. This is the, I think it's the IMF, International right. Monetary Fund, that is behind this, a universal coin. I don't think the world is ready for that yet. We're not ready for the mark of the beast yet. I'm not saying the technology isn't here. I'm not saying, you know, the digital currency is here, all of that. But there's still a lot of resistance and and there's, you know, there there's some things that need to be worked out to yes. bring about an agreement and we're and although it will be forced there's going to be wars to get there there's going to be these things that are going to cause it economic catastrophe is going yep. to be one of the things that has to come about yeah absolutely i mean um i'm of the mindset tom because again we're all trying to figure out biblically how does this work we still haven't seen this whole uh, Ezekiel 38, 39 thing happening, but we're watching the players all kind of move around. For example, I think it was, um, uh, who's the other pastor that's, uh, down anyway, the guy up in Huntington beach, um, uh, who, who I like, uh, I don't know which one you like Joe Pettix right. in Huntington. I like you, Tom. <laughs> so I'm trying to think who's the Huntington beach, Joe Pettix in Huntington beach. No, no, no. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. Jack Hibbs, Jack Hibbs. He, he okay, came Chino. on. He's on, in Chino. Chino. Okay. Um, he came on, uh, he just did a quick little thing and basically announced, Hey, Israel's at war. Let's just call it for, for what it is. And I think that's a front that we need to be looking at also because, you know, Israel and Iran is much more, uh, 
you know, biblically tied more than anything. And it's my understanding now too, that in Syria, Russia has control so much of Syria right now that basically anything coming and going out of Syria, it's Russia who has to approve it, not the Syrians. So, okay, so so this is interesting. So Israel's at war, I would say in the sense that they're always at war. They're never not. Yeah. In, in the history of Israel, um, they've never, it's like they've never not been at war. So they're always ready. And while everybody is watching this, I'm in Israel. Um, yeah. And, and, and I should be safe. <laughs> but, well, but Israel's got their problems on the inside. They got their threats from the outside. And what we're watching is the, the whole geopolitical. Yeah. We're, we're watching the whole moving of the chess pieces and people. Uh, they're locking down into position more. What's interesting yeah. about Russia in Syria is in Ezekiel chapter 38, I believe it's verse seven, God says this, that Gog, G-O-G, -G, yes. the leader of Magog, the, the Russian leader, will be a guard for the troops that are gonna come against Israel. Now, this is fascinating to me how specific and detailed God's prophetic word is because what you described is exactly what Ezekiel church, chapter 38, verse 7 says. Now, yeah. Russia, there's going to be all these checks and balances. Everything, is, Putin's got to agree to everything. Yeah, right. out of Syria. So, I mean, I, I look at that and go, it is remarkable. But I, I, at the same time, I am convinced, John, Ezekiel 38 is not going to happen tomorrow. Um, no, because definitely there's certain, not. Yeah, there's certain things that are not that are definitely not in place yet. Let me go down this road then too because this is kind of as time has gone by and we're watching the players uh come into place especially watching the money of everything that's going to go on. And I've made this point to you before. You know, you've got a a multi-trillion dollar industry of trading currencies. That's a huge market. You can't just overnight wipe that out and say it's over and done with. And this is why I, I keep bringing up this point. It's like, look, the, everything is getting in place. Now you need that shove over the cliff. And what that shove over the cliff could actually be is some sort of uh, world war on a couple of different fronts to where absolute chaos and from the ashes rises this, this okay, you know what? We've, we're, we're done with the currencies. We've got to get this right. We're just going to go with one global currency and that'll just solve all the problems. Because you know what? We got into this war over money to begin with and we can never let that happen again. Wouldn't that make a lot of sense? Yes, it would. Yeah. It, indeed, it would. Everything's just so fascinating <clears throat> to watch. Yep. <laughs> and trying to make heads or tails of it. Yeah. Uh, it is. It is. I forgot to mention, John. I should have done this earlier. Uh, well, you might not want to mention it. Your your um, your website. Which one? Oh, <laughs> see, there you go. Do you have any you want to mention publicly? You, you know what? I I I would direct people towards my YouTube channel. Which um, uh, look, I guess I should say thank you or thank God for that. And I I just want everybody. In fact, I've had so many people actually ask me, "Hey, you should interview Tom Hughes." And I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. That's that that's what that he does. Terrible. I don't need to do that." That guy's that guy, that guy's terrible. <laughs> look, what I really focus on more than anything is that I want to make people aware of. Uh, what's happening in the news for one. And uh, as Christians, how are we really supposed to approach this and deal with this? I mean, I just, let me tell you, the last video I just did was on LGBTQ and something I had seen last last week. I, I'm actually very pleased at the response from that. And um, the next one I think I'm going to be doing is going after the Lady of in Church. Uh, <laughs> because look, time is short, man. And I, I just, it's like, you know, step up or don't there, there is no time left not to be all for Christ. Amen. So okay, I gotta ask you, since you brought up the Laodicean church, how's yes. Hillsong? I wouldn't know. I don't go there. So I just thought, I mean, it's from the land down under, I think, aren't they? They're hurting. They're, they're hurt and they've they got really? all sorts of scandal. Oh gosh, they're they got all sorts of scandal going on. In fact, um, 
who's the uh, Brian Houston, who's the leader of that. I know he stepped down at the beginning of the year so he could deal with his lawsuits or whatever, because, yeah, that's a whole scandal going on there. Look, the point is, um, I, I am not for three songs in a sermon. And I think, you know, the, the point of this next video I want to do is, is look, it's, if it's, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand, you know, that does not save you. That is not a, a repentance of the heart. Um, you know, just because you utter some words doesn't make, you know, you're good to go. Yeah. Because so, then, you know, Paul warned about this. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, and I'm glad you brought it up. So I I did that for years. And uh, the, I, I see your hand, I see your hand, I see your hand, right? Yeah. Uh, close your eyes, bow your head, that yep. kind of thing. But I've always, whenever I did it, I said, hey, if you say this prayer, you it's got to be genuine, you got to mean it, or it's not going to save you. Yeah. However, what it's, it, it's, I've got to this point where it's, bothered me because the, the the bottom line is it's repentance and surrender to Christ and 100% and I think I, you know I'm not saying everybody that goes down that path is wrong I think there's just some confusion there with some uh, I I, I got to be careful on what I'd say but I will say I'll this, say it for you that, yeah I'll, I'm going to allow you to I believe that that there's a lot of people that think they're going to heaven just Absolutely. because they said a prayer and they've been misled and it's troubling. Yep. Um, and that, you know, when it came to our last resurrection Sunday, Easter yep. um, Sunday, just a few weeks back, I just, I just flat out said, look, this is on you. Um, <laughs> I didn't do a traditional <laughs> altar call. Yeah. And I said, you need to get right with the Lord. I said, um, Things are bad in this world, but the bottom line is you're going to hell. And that's pretty much how I ended the message was wow. Was, was that it was like, I mean, but here's but that's the reality of it is like yeah. is like, look, we need to be very we need to be serious. It's not a game to play. Uh I I you know it's, it's not about numbers. It is people need to be saved. And we have one message, it's the gospel of the hope of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that is that is the point of the channel, and it's going to be this next video. I I love Ray Comfort's. Uh, he's always talking about sin debt, and that is something I do not see from the pulpit. And it's it's a question of okay, who's going to pay that sin debt? Are you going to let Jesus pay for that sin debt, or are you going to pay for that sin debt? It's that simple. And if we're not talking about it, people won't know about it. Yeah. So that's. You know, I know we're going off on a, a bit of a rabbit hole with this, but uh, look, I think it's a really critical thing that we need to just be hammering uh, to viewers, everybody that we come in contact yeah. with. I agree. It's the most important message that we have. And yeah, who's going to pay our sin debt? If you, and and yeah, most people think they're going to pay it. Well, I'll, I, I'm a pretty good person. So I well, good luck with that. You know, uh, the Bible well, is very clear. Or, the books will be open. God is love. God is love. He loves everybody. So he loved, he's well, a forgiven. Yeah. He does love it. He loves people so much that he sent his only son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Problem is you still got to surrender to him. You got to believe in him. You got to trust in him for the forgiveness right. of your sins. Right. Yeah. God is love. He proves his love. Let me, let me throw this, let me throw this out there too, uh, because I just watched your program with uh, you just did, I think it was on Monday uh, in regards to the guy there, he was talking about uh, principalities and powers that were, uh, you know, I, I've mentioned this before. I am believing that one of the biggest uh, principalities uh, over the United States is pride. You know, it's pride and materialism. So, well, surrender, well, to surrender, you got to get rid of your pride. Pride <laughs> is the number one thing that keeps us from surrendering to Christ. I'm yeah. good enough. How could God not love me? Exactly. If there's really a God, what am I doing that's wrong? So I know this is totally off topic. Starting well, not to off sound topic, like Joel Osteen. You, all right. So I'm watching, uh, I was watching Ray Comfort the other night and he's showing a, a uh, was it Andy Stanley video? And I've seen a lot of Andy Stanley mm, I videos. I saw that video. I'm slowly putting clips oh. of different ones together. 
but just some of the things that, you know, I hadn't seen that particular video of him yet. And I'm surprised it got by me. But some of the things he talked about oh. sin, if, every, if I asked all of you, you know, I, I, the, the whole sin question, it was just so bizarre the yeah. way he put it in the answer. I was like, so basically everything's okay no matter what you do. How you define se oh, sexual, uh, what was it, sexual um, immorality. How you, yes. That's what it was. How you define sexual immorality. You'd all have a different definition. How can God judge you for that then? And then to say he takes, he, do you remember that part? He holds up the Bible and he goes, this book, a bunch of compilations from from uh, ancient, 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 ancient Hebrew people who were just trying to figure yep. out how to deal with all of the complications of life. So they came up with this creation myth. If you want to believe in the myth of creation, the, then you can believe in the myth of creation. But the Hebrew people, the ancient Hebrew people were just trying to figure out stuff. And you know what? There's some things in here, but this isn't truth. Yeah, that's right. And then he this said, isn't this truth. isn't truth. I could not believe that he actually yeah. said that. And by the way, I'm so glad you brought this up about uh, Andy Stanley, because by the way, uh, and you would already know this, Charles Stanley, he was amazing. His father, Charles Stanley. Yeah. And then was it just yesterday uh, he yeah. he passed away? Yeah. I used to listen to him, uh, well, religiously. <laughs> so to watch uh, his son um, go this way is something but again, if you're not, if you, you know, if, if the Bible is just, you know, Hey, it's just a whole bunch of stories uh, thrown together and that's your viewpoint of the Bible, then why yeah. do you need salvation to begin with? Yeah, absolutely. We need, we need Christ. Hey, John, we're out of time, but that was a great way. Just a reminder for the real reasons why we do these things. It's, it's for the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you can tell everyone, uh, John and I pre-recorded this because I am traveling and a bunch of you're going to be joining me in Israel here uh any day Italy. I have a couple of, I uh in I'll be in Israel um oh. I've, I've gone all over the place oh. but a bunch of yeah I have a group coming to uh, meet me in Israel and uh we have two lives that are going to be in Israel one's going to be with a monkey and the other's going to be with Brit Gillette so uh and, and I'll give you a video. I'm going to go out and show you guys what's going on in Israel so you can see for yourself. Um, we'll be in Tel Aviv for one of them. I think I'm in Jerusalem for one of the other lives. So looking very forward to you guys joining me. It's going to be really cool. Uh, and John, thank you for joining me. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure as always with you. All right. Can't wait to have you back. God bless you, everybody. Cool. Thanks. See ya. Thanks, John.